Imagine being forced to do backbreaking work every day, all day long, and never get paid. Imagine what it would be like to be taken from your family and never see them again. Imagine never having new clothes to wear, enough food to eat, or a real bed to sleep in. It's hard to imagine, but that's the way enslaved people in America lived for over 200 years. However, many Americans opposed slavery and fought to abolish it. This is the story of the abolitionist movement and those who oppose slavery in America. When did slavery in America begin? Why did it begin? To answer those questions, we have to travel to Colonial Virginia and the year 1671. To meet the growing demand for workers, the colony of Virginia instituted slavery. Slavery is a social economic system which allows one person to own another person as property. For almost the next 200 years, hundreds of thousands of Africans were taken from their homes in Africa. After being captured, they were chained, put on ships, and brought to America. The forced transportation of African people from Africa to the New World is known as the Middle Passage. The Middle Passage was a terrifying experience. The trip took weeks or months with hundreds of people crammed below deck. The ceilings were so low that a person could not even sit up straight. Many Africans had their hands and ankles chained so they couldn't move freely. Many didn't survive the voyage. America was made up of 13 British colonies. In America, the captured African people were forced to become enslaved. An enslaved person is someone who is owned by and works without pay for another person. Enslaved people were bought and sold like property. Many enslaved people were sold at auctions. At the auction, enslaved people would be forced to stand on a raised platform so they could be seen by the buyers. The buyer who bid the most money would then own the enslaved person. It was at the auctions where African families were split apart. Husbands, wives, and children went to different owners. Many never saw each other again. Men, women, and children were forced to work endless hours under horrible conditions and never get paid. Some enslaved people worked doing housework but most were forced to do backbreaking work in tobacco and cotton fields. Their living conditions were terrible too. Most lived in one room cabins. Up to 10 people could live in one single hut. There was little furniture and many people slept on beds made of straw or rags. Enslaved people were given a weekly food allowance of perhaps some cornmeal, dried fish, and a little pork but there was never enough to eat. Enslaved people lived and worked under terribly difficult and horrid conditions, and they had no personal freedoms at all. By 1775, America consisted of 13 British colonies along the coast of the Atlantic Ocean. In 1776, the 13 American colonies started a war for independence against Great Britain. Soon afterwards, colonies in the North began to end slavery. In the Southern states, things were different. By 1850, there were about 4 million enslaved people living in the Southern states. Cotton was an important crop in the South. It took lots of workers to grow and harvest cotton. 
Enslaved people provided the manpower to get the work done. Slavery was important to the plantation owners and the Southern economy. Most Southerners didn't want slavery to end. By the 1800s, Americans, both black and white, began organizing and speaking out against slavery. The people who wanted to get rid of or abolish slavery were called abolitionists. One of the most important abolitionists of the 1800s was William Lloyd Garrison from Massachusetts. To get his message out to the people, he started a weekly anti-slavery newspaper called The Liberator. Garrison also spoke in public about the cause of the abolitionist movement. In 1833, Garrison and a group of other abolitionists started the American Anti-Slavery Society. The society wanted to end slavery in America. Many enslaved people dreamed of freedom too. In 1831, an enslaved person named Nat Turner started a slave rebellion. Nat Turner, along with a group of other slaves, killed a plantation owner and his family. Turner hoped it would start a massive slave uprising, but Turner was caught and he and the other slaves were put to death. Frederick Douglass had been an enslaved person too, but he did escape and became a leader in the abolitionist movement. He joined the Anti-Slavery Society and began speaking to groups and writing about his experience as an enslaved person. He began his own anti-slavery newspaper, The North Star. Women too spoke out against slavery. Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote a book entitled Uncle Tom's Cabin. Published in 1852, the book described the lives of enslaved people and helped to spread the word about the inhumanity of slavery. 300,000 copies of the book were sold in the first year. The book did more to stir up anti-slavery sentiments than just about anything else at the time. One year later, a simplified version of Uncle Tom's Cabin was published. It helped to tell young readers about the horrors of slavery. Harriet Tubman was an African-American abolitionist. She too escaped slavery and went on to help hundreds of enslaved people escape to freedom in the northern colonies and Canada. By 1850, there were 15 free states and 15 slave states. The quarrel over the expansion of slavery continued to divide the country. Tensions continued to grow throughout the decade. One by one, the southern states voted to secede or leave the United States. South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas. North Carolina, Virginia, Arkansas, and Tennessee formed a new country, the Confederate States of America, or the Confederacy. In March 1861, Abraham Lincoln was sworn in as President of the United States. In his inaugural address, he appealed to the South to reconsider and return to the Union. Unfortunately, the South did not comply. Ultimately, the result was war. The Civil War. A civil war is a war between two groups of people of the same country. The war began in 1861 and raged on for years. In September 1862, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation means to free someone. It set all the enslaved people in the Confederacy free. 
word of the proclamation spread throughout the country. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas on the 22nd day of September, in the year of our Lord, 1862, a proclamation was issued by the President of the United States containing, among other things, the following to wit that on the first day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves shall be then, thenceforward and forever free. The war now had two purposes, to preserve the Union and to end slavery. The war continued until 1865. In the end, the Union armies were victorious the Confederate States became part of the United States again. And slavery in America had ended. All that remained was for the abolition of slavery to be added to the Constitution. The 13th Amendment made it illegal for slavery to exist in the United States. The amendment was ratified in December of 1865. The dream of so many people who had opposed slavery had finally come true. Slavery was finally abolished in America.